I've played Guild Wars 2 for over 20,000 hours, and I've learned a whole lot and collected just about everything in the game, so it's a perfect time to go round again. Join me in the adventures of my completely fresh account known only as the Microtransaction Enjoyer on the quest of obtaining and unlocking everything in the game, from legendary gear and mounts to living world story episodes, maps, and ultimate gem store quality of life, purely through efficient and somewhat sensible gameplay. No real money required. I'm gonna do a little bit more farming. Um, I'll maybe I'll wait. Is there a public dragon storm coming up? Oh, we just missed it. Yeah, I want to do. Um, I want to do a dragon storm here because I think I can probably buy a, a set of berserker gear as well. I kind of want to do both. The gamers, this is actually really cool. Um, so right now we're at 27 hours, and I was I've been slacking a bit, and we've over farmed a bit. This is the final thing I'm going to insta-buy because I'm lazy. And here we go. That is the final piece in the puzzle. This character, completely from scratch, is now ready for all endgame content. Full Celestial with Firebrand runes, full Celestial trinkets, Axe, Torch, and Staff. The hybrid build, great for soloing open-world content. Great for meta events and perfectly ready to get on in to any of the end game that we might want to tackle. Could even kind of hybrid up. We could turn this into something that works in World vs. World 2. It's a bit weird, but we could make it work. And there it is. Slash age over the top. 27 hours. All the way from absolutely nothing. And this was just by doing, again, like leveling and then basically the same open world farming I did at the start of, um, at the start of Zero to Hero, right? Uh, with a few tricks with using bladed armor and some cheap items on the trading post. Could have done it a little bit better as well. Uh, I did. I ended up not. I ended up buying an extra bladed item when I could have just got the ice golems helmet, which would have saved me a, a good amount of time. Actually, uh, we bought a cheap weapon and then we basically insta bought everything. So the value of this is actually pretty high, right? Like all these things are about seventeen gold. It's bloody eye watering. Right? It's horrible. Um, yeah, but we got there in the end. Wasn't too bad. And here we are. And you know that's kind of what I was getting at with the whole zero to hero thing, you know, like it really does not take very long to actually get your character set up. And it just comes down to basically exactly what I was doing at the start of the zero to hero, except we have to do a little bit of setup first by getting to 80, right? Broadly speaking, it was, I didn't do anything different, right? I used the same techniques. We looked at bladed armor instead because we didn't have exotic, right? So we went for bladed armor. So that was kind of interesting. That, that was the fun part, was going for the bladed armor uh, and doing some verdant brink and then just farming a bit of gold up just like that and away we go. And I am going to do a little bit of a bonus here as well. Right? I'll, I'll tease everyone here. Um, I think what I should have done here, and we're going to throw this in, for some bonus knowledge for everyone just starting out their account. What I should have done is actually got a set of exotic Berserker gear first. First of all, that's a great starter gear for basically any character. Anything has like a basic power build that you can set up, right? It's very standard to do that. Um, and this is how you get ridiculously... In fact, let's do it now. We're going to do it right now because we don't have to worry about the runes because this gear actually comes with runes. So what I should have done before Celestial, because this actually was a bit of a grind because, again, I kind of didn't... I kind of forgot how expensive Celestial stuff was. 17 gold a pop is no joke, right? Especially when I'm not allowing myself to farm strike missions. I actually did not allow myself because I didn't do strike missions in the original Zero to Hero until much later, until I'd done a lot of open world farming to get my account started. So um, I didn't do it here. It would have been way quicker... If if I'd got into fractals and strike missions, but I deliberately didn't do that. Um, and any kind of instance farming. That would have been much more efficient. Um, but what I should have done to kind of smooth things out and have like a an entry-level gear set to start, you know, farming stuff more efficiently was actually buy a set of exotic Berserker first. Berserker is just power damage, strike damage. It's really effective. It actually will work um, even especially into instance content where lots of damage is very, very good and Berserker gear is very good at doing that. Every build, every class in the entire game basically has a bunch of good power builds, right, as well. So it's like, it's never going to be like a bad choice to buy Berserker. And it also happens to be cheap. So let me tell you something. One piece, one piece of exotic gear, celestial gear on the trading list. Let's look it up. Charged quartz, 17 gold. Yeah. Yeah. 
let's um let's look at how much that costs for an entire set of berserker so it's ruby oracalcum and uh yeah so we can get a full set of jewelry two rings four gold an amulet two gold two earrings four gold and that's a total of 10 gold for a full set that's less than one charged quartz earring so to be clear right the setup i went for here in 27 hours was the most expensive setup in the entire game and we've got enough spare change that we can do this i'm just going to go ahead and do what i should have done now uh, and we're going to get ourselves a full set of berserker gear as well again we're wasting a bit of gold here by instantly buying but we're on a time crunch okay we've got to get to work so there we are those are all of our berserker um setup here and we can do the same for armor now here's the trick you might go, oh, I'm going to search for Berserker. Aha! You have fallen into the trap. Because here you'll find Berserker's Draconic Coat. Or, you know, if you're, you know, it will be different for different um, armor weights, obviously, right? Um, six gold. Oh, no. Well, this is the crafted set, which is kind of anchored in material worth, right? You need materials to craft this. So it has like a, almost like a set value, right? This, terrible mistake. Because check this out. If we go ahead... And we search for Devonna. This is like a random drop that you get out in the open world or from raids or whatever. Check this out. The same piece of gear, identical, 29 silver. And it comes with a really good rune as well. Strength rune. It's not best in slot. We're going to be looking at a scholar rune potentially um, down the line. That's pretty expensive, so I might not grab that now. But, you know, we, we obviously could. Um, but we get a really nice rune baked into that as well. And this entire set is going to cost less than that one piece. So again, this is a big trick. Always kind of filter for what you want. So the way we could... F but how would I know? How would you find this? How would I find this teapot if I don't know about Devon as well? Here's the trick, right? We can go to armor and then go here. We can select what stats we want. So we want power. We want precision and ferocity. That's berserker. We can match our level. So we get level 80 gear, right? Uh, and then what we can go ahead and do is want exotic only obviously and then flip the price here and there you have it we now have a list of the cheapest possible berserker gear that we can get let's go ahead and grab the full set i'm going to insta buy again we could save gold by not doing that but this will work for everything by the way this will work for um light armor it does miss out a little bit it won't show you stuff that you can select the stats on which is a little bit awkward you kind of have to know what those are like the ice uh, ice golems helmet i got the ebon pauldrons as well that's a really good uh, cheap thing you can also get um a head as well i think which i ended up kind of yeah, you know, well yeah you can get there's one other piece i think you can get actually um that you can buy for big cheap so yeah watch out for that uh, let's see. What did I buy here? Uh, we got to the gloves. Legs! And it gets better. We can do the same thing for weapons. In fact, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to take credit. My chat told me about it. I completely forgot. So we can do the same thing. But here's where stuff gets crazy. This is where stuff's going to get wild. Check this out. If we scroll down here, what we're going to find is uh, twin sisters. This is a sword, and for our DPS, but we want a sword, a focus, and a great sword. Okay, that's what we want. This is Berserker. 120 power. This is it, this is basically the best you're gonna get outside of Ascended. One gold. Okay, compared to 12 gold for Celestial, by the way. This is literally like 10 times cheaper. Okay. And it comes with the best in slot rune. Oh yeah. Best in slot rune as well. Twin sisters, very good for setting up this. Uh, setting up your gear. So let's go ahead and buy that. There we go. And again, I want to kind of uh, show this off here. This works for other weapons. So we can do the same thing for great swords. Right away, has my filter gone? Oh, my filter's gone. Hang on, lads. Let me get my filter back in there. We can do this for great swords. We can find all the things. For example, we're going to buy a great sword here and look at this. You could buy the Berserker's Pearl Broadsword, which doesn't have a rune in it, right? Which is Berserker, which is good for two gold. Or we could buy Ebon Blade. Doesn't have a particularly good rune. Not the, honestly, not the worst thing in the world. But we can simply replace that and we can save one gold. And bear in mind, this is identical. Look, look at the stats. 239 power, 171 precision, 171 ferocity. 
Berserker, 239, 171, 171. This is identical. These two things are identical, right? Okay. There's some stuff up here, but this is actually uh, Dragon Stat, I think. And maybe some Marauder up there as well. That's Assassins. And we can go ahead and just pick this up for one gold for Berserker. And it's got a rune. Sigil, sorry. I know what runes and sigils are. It's a sigil, guys. Okay, I'm, uh, you know, I'm I'm spreading misinformation. Honestly, I like it. I enjoy doing it. Um, yeah, it's good. And then Foci, we need to get ourselves a Berserker Focus and check it out. Look, same thing. Berserker's Pearl, uh, Pearl Conch is here for one gold and 14 silver. And here we can actually get a really nice roleplay focus here with Adam, which even has a skin on it. And bear in mind, guys, we're getting skins here too. These are actually have cool skins. We're actually, we're not only getting a better deal, we're getting runes attached and sigils attached, and we're getting skins at the same time, all for cheaper than buying the crafted gear. And we now get this cool skull that has a sigil on it. Not the worst sigil, but not the best. And it's the best in slot for one quarter of the price. So we just simply repeat the process. And here we go. Lovely. And that is going to be that. And I actually will very quickly show off um, the other armor sets. So you might be going, but wait, you're a heavy armor class. What about me? Well, if you're a medium class, you look up... Um, hang on, we need to do not for Guardian. Nika, right? And we have Nika's coat, Nika's mask, Nika's boots, Nika's gloves, Nika's leggings, and Nika's shoulders. This is great for setting up a power mech if you're try uh, playing an NG or a Holosmith or something like that. Absolutely amazing. Or a thief. Well, I'm just going to list all the medium classes, but you get the idea, right? This is going to allow you to set up your medium class with a really nice build to then leapfrog onto the next build you want to create. And then finally, for the light classes, it is Zed. Zed's Mask. And I'll actually quickly demonstrate how you would do this um, if, you know, without knowing the name, right? So you do the exact same thing. Uh, we'd search for the stats we want, which in this case is Berserker, which is a great, very cheap option to start off your character before you want to make something else. So we look for power, precision, and ferocity. And then we simply filter like this. And you'll see that it will actually list all of them, right? It will lit because it will list all armor weights now. So Devonas, Zeds, uh, and then Nika here as well, right? So you can actually just filter all of this uh, and go through all of that. Same thing uh, for, what's well, for jewelry too. Do wait, do we overpay for our amulet? Was that, oh no, yeah. Now, I will mention this. Be a little bit careful here. So, look at the jewelry. Look at this. Notice that you have the stats... And you also have the upgrade. So it's it's got the um, Ruby Oracalcum Earring and Exquisite Ruby Jewel. Not all amulets ship with this. Notice that this Berserker amulet looks like a good deal. It's maybe fractionally... Yeah, you can see it's, it's like... Well, it's a tiny bit... Well, yeah, it's, it's not that good. But it's a little bit cheaper than our Ruby Oracalcum amulet. But notice that it doesn't have the jewel. We'd actually have to buy that... Instead, we'd have to buy it and then upgrade it, which would then, of course, end up with us wasting money, right? So just be aware of that. But that's how it works. I think that kind of makes sense. So now we have our full Berserker set as well, which is nice, isn't it? Uh, I will go ahead and pick up um, another sigil. Oh, do we buy? Oh, yeah, we bought the Focus. So what do we actually need here? We have a four sigil. I'm going to go ahead and get impact sigils um, for the other setup here as well, because that's going to be a lot of damage. Impact Sigil is the usual other, just best-in-slot damaging Sigil. You honestly wouldn't need to worry about this on your first set, in my opinion. Um, you could you could probably chill out and, uh, you know, not worry about this and just go for your second gear set. But I will, because who knows? Maybe we'll have some use of it. Oh, yeah, there we go. So we need two of these, one for each weapon set. And then we're going to need, I think, one more Force Sigil, as we don't have one of those. So we're just going to finish off this gear set here. There we are. Impact Sigil. And we need one Sigil of Force. Because, again, this is just the best in slot damage. So this is going to set us up really nicely for getting into instance content on a very standard, very bog standard power damage build. Which, in general, if you're looking to start getting into instance content, I think going for a power damage build is a really good choice. And like I said, you can do this on every profession. In fact, I'll list them now, otherwise people are going to be mad at me. So, on Guardian, we can go ahead and play Dragon Hunter uh, or Wilbund, if we wanted to, uh, as a power DPS. On Elementalist, we could play Weaver or Catalyst uh, for power damage. For Thief, we can go ahead and play Daredevil 
or even Deadeye, if, you, if you're feeling adventurous, um, for Necromancer, you can play Reaper, which honestly, that's really hype, especially if you're new to the game, actually. Uh, on Engineer, you can play Hollowsmith, Scrapper, or Mechanist, so a lot of variety with power damage um, in that case. For Mesmer, you can play Chronomancer or Virtuoso for power damage, which is, again, those are both really good, by the way. That's like a really nice bonus meme. For Ranger, you could play Untamed or Soul Beast, which would be, again, both really good options, I think, uh, from a power damage perspective. For Warrior, uh, Warrior actually probably has the most options. You could play Power Berserker, Power Spellbreaker, or Power Blades. On hell, even Core Power Core Warrior works pretty okay as well, to be honest. So that's pretty good. I think... Is that all of them? Did I get all the professions? That was all of them. No one can... No one can cyberbully me now. Yeah, we got them all. We got them all. Oh, Rev! I didn't! Revenant! You could play Vindicator uh, or Herald. Honestly, or Renegade too, actually. For power. So there it is. You got power options on everything. So, if you don't want to do a grind for Celestial Gate, in general, Celestial Gate is amazing. Uh, and that's why I went for it on this character. However, if you don't, no problem. You can get yourself a power build in literally a few hours of farming, right? Like, you know, to get this, all of this cost what? 20 gold? For all of this, including the um, sigils, and we got a few for free, right? We need to buy one full sigil, actually. What, 20 gold? That's, a, you know, 20 gold per hour is like a pretty standard farming rate for Guild Wars 2. Um, you know, let's imagine you're doing 10 gold an hour, which is, you know, that's that, that's realistic if you're very new to the game, potentially. Um, that's two hours of farming, and you've got gear that is essentially ready to get into endgame and is like nearly best in slot. So that is the power of the trading post. That is the power of the Berserker gear. Yeah. But anyway, look. New build template. The Naked Mushroom. Let's soulbind our shiny new gear. Here we go. You love to see it. Boom. And that is a second armor set with less than 30 hours in the game. How about that, huh? There's our great sword. There's twin sisters. There's Adam. We can do all this. We honestly could just go for a rare back piece as well, to be honest, which would be a lot cheaper, uh, at least for now, and then replace it later. It's it's not going to be the end of the world to have um, a rare piece of gear. Uh, so here we go. Let's get our upgrades on. Four sigil here, and then impact as well. And we'll just put, we'll just replace this vision sigil with our impact sigil. And there we go. We've got ourselves a very, very nifty build, which is pretty much good to go. A few things need to be adjusted, but this would be perfectly serviceable. We would have to go ahead and unlock Dragon Hunter, though. We, we don't... Firebrand, you could, you actually could play Firebrand Power, by the way, if you really wanted to. Um, it's certainly not great, but you absolutely could if you wanted to. But I definitely recommend going for either a Dragon Hunter or a Willbender. Core Guard um, actually works pretty well, too, with power. So that would be another option. But there it is. That is that. And just to kind of illustrate what I was talking about... Um, you can get a rare back piece, which which is significantly weaker, make no mistake. Um, but if we do tiger, this... Oh, wait, no. No, it's level 65! Oh, no! Cancel that! Cut, cut! It's, it's trash! Yeah, because it's not the worst thing in the universe. Um, because, again, uh, back pieces don't give a crazy amount of stats anyway. So it could be a lot worse. Um, I think I'll actually demonstrate this right now, just, but you know, we're going to make some mistakes into miracles here. What I'm going to go ahead and do is demonstrate how you'll do this with upgrades. For when we buy our um, tiger back piece, it's not going to come with an upgrade. And this is how you go about handling that. So we buy our back piece that doesn't have an upgrade, and then we buy an exquisite jewel. Uh, rare, boom. So because we're using berserker gear, we want an exquisite ruby jewel. So we're going to go ahead and buy that. But you could buy anything you want, right? If you're a healer, maybe you want the Snowflake for healing power and boon duration. Maybe you want Toughness and Healing um, with Exquisite Sapphire Jewel or whatever. Right? You can scroll through all of these and kind of see what you want. There's even Diviner there for some boon duration. Uh, the only one you can't get is Celestial because it has account bound stuff baked into it. But for now, we will actually use this as a learning experience to use this scuffed back piece. It's got decent stats, right? It's got some toughness, power, and ferocity. This build actually doesn't need a lot of extra crit chance because we have a lot of crit chance from our traits. Uh, for example, on a power build, it would look something like this. So we take a lot of this stuff. We'd have zeal for loads of damage. In fact, we'll just use the core guardian build that we had um, 
kind of at the start of the game, right? We'll put virtues in here, and there we go. This is now, uh, you know, a very, very serviceable power build setup here, right? Not so bad, right? And then you can see here that we have 10% critical strike chance um, with radiant power, and we also have 25% chance while we have resolution. And we're actually going to have a lot of resolution because of virtues and also from the radiance trait line. We could take healer's resolution for a lot of resolution here, for example. Um, yeah, so there it is. And that means we don't need to worry about precision that much. But anyway, that's not the point. The point is, here's the Spine Guard. It's rare. It's not that much worse than the Exotic. It's a little bit. It's not the end of the world. Boom! Put the jewel in. And there it is. We basically got ourselves an almost exotic Berserker back piece that we'll certainly do until we can afford to splash out a little bit on the full Berserker one. And with that, we have succeeded in getting the job done. Two gear sets, gamers. Two gear sets. Full power damage, full celestial, all of that in 27 hours of, honestly, pretty relaxed gameplay, totally from scratch. Boom! Not too bad, right? Oh, yeah. And, well, disclaimer. Still need Scholar Runes. But let's go farm some more gold. Let's go. We're going to get those Scholar Runes, gamers. We're not done. Okay. There is 24 gold, so I need Scholar Runes. Rune of the Scholar. 6. 27 gold. That'll do. And now I need a jewel. We need the Ruby Exquisite. Ruby jewel for the back piece. And there we go. That is the final puzzle piece that we need. Swap over to that build template. Here we go. We can get the Lucky Great Tiger Lantern with Berserker stats. And there we go. We now need to equip it. Get the thing in there. There's the Ruby Jewel. And finish off our setup here with Scholar Runes. It does pain me a bit to replace the Strength Runes, but they're so cheap because they're just, you know, it's not really a lot of gold being burned. But there you have it. That is... Two characters, or rather two builds, a power DPS build that will serve us very well on a Dragon Hunter or a Willbender, um, which is lovely, on Guardian. Great, and this will work on any profession too. You could basically do the exact same thing here for any profession, because you can get this very cheap Berserker gear, uh, and power builds exist for every single, uh, honestly, basically every single elite spec almost, right? But pretty much, ev well, every profession will have one at least. So this will always work as a starting gear option for getting into instance content. And we also have a support build. So we have a DPS build and we have a hybrid support build too. So in other words, we have our character that can basically do anything. We can perform multiple roles. We are completely ready for even the most challenging content in the game. Uh, you would be absolutely fine um, clearing even challenge mode raids and most challenge mode strike missions with this setup, with both these setups here, with these exotic setups, you'd be completely fine with that. Um, yeah, not too bad, right? And that is, time has now been called at 29 hours and 47 minutes. Not too bad, right? We're ready to do anything in the game. Uh, and I've got to say, I didn't actually rush. You know, I've almost, you know, I'll tell you what, maybe I'll tease this for a bit more content. I actually feel like I might do this again at some point purely because I want to do it in under 24 hours. I could even do a 24-hour stream, maybe. Oh, no, actually, that's probably not that possible um, because I, I, you need a lot of, like, daily lockouts, right? I was using a lot of daily stuff. I didn't do this all in one go, so it would be... I'd have to use instance content to do that, and part of the rules of this challenge um, and the way I did this is I didn't do instance content um, to get this gear. Like, this gear was open world, buying stuff, selling stuff, right? doing dailies, right? All that kind of stuff. There wasn't any, you know, like getting into raids ridiculously early or anything like that, right? It was just purely, uh, purely open world content. Yeah, I could do dungeons, maybe. Actually, dungeons would speed it up a lot because you can get gear from dungeons and they're really good gold. But I very deliberately avoided instance content um, on this run. I was just doing open world stuff from the expansions and, of course, going through the leveling process too. But yeah, pretty fun. Um, pretty interesting stuff. I think, you know, I think hopefully there's some few useful tips 
when it comes to buying items and how to, you know, choose what gear you're going to go for. Celestial, definitely a very strong option. But I, again, like I said, I think going for a Berserker set first, just getting that baseline effectiveness that's going to set you up is going to be great. Because bear in mind, if you can get a cheap power build like this for 30 gold or so, like 40 gold was approximately the total cost, like maybe 50 actually, because of the back piece and the runes were pretty pricey. Um, yeah, for like 40, 50. If you can get this going, your gold rate goes up massively because suddenly, yeah, you're into fractals, you're in strike missions, you're in raids. Like this is where your gold per hour skyrockets. The gold per hour on this account probably wasn't that great, maybe 15-ish, maybe a touch over 15. Um, but a big part of that was because I wasn't using the really efficient gold per hour stuff, right? I don't have all of the living world maps for the best open world farms. We could unlock those very easily. I don't have, uh, I'm not using raids or fractals or strike missions. These are again, basically best slot farms pretty much like you know they're amazing for getting gear and getting gold at the same time so once you once you've got to this point your progress accelerates once you have the first set of gear you can go so much faster because that set of gear is a tool and i would always encourage people to look at the game this way look at your character and the items you have as a tool as an investment so it's not like, oh, you know, I'm here because I want the best in slot. It's like, well, what are you going to use that for, right? Well, now we can take this gear to get our ascended gear. We can get into raids to increase our gold farming, to unlock content in the gem store, to use uh, that gold to buy cosmetics if we want to, right? Um, to buy legendaries eventually, right? Like this gear is like a force multiplier. Gear is an enabler in Guild Wars 2. And it gives us the freedom to do more stuff and be even more efficient as time goes on. And that's just with um, just, you know, under 30 hours. And again, you know, I didn't even go hard, right? I could have done this in under 24 pretty easily. Um, probably even under 20 is doable um, if you were smart about it. I did a lot of kind of late night grinding. I just kind of kept playing when I didn't really have much to do. And if you're a bit smart with it, you could actually do it way quicker. Right, seriously, you could go way, way faster with this. Because um, if you're really clever with it and you only do like the... you have a, Let's say you have a limited amount of time, right? And you don't have time to grind the game all day. Just do the really good stuff. Like do the meta events, do the high value meta events. And then boom, you can even, you can even get to this point with less time in game. More real time because you're basically... You're, you're taking advantage of the fact that Guild Wars 2 has daily lockouts, and daily lockouts, you know, once you've got past those, you kind of run out of super high-value stuff to do. Um, but, yeah. Now we're kind of getting a little bit off-topic. There it is. It's done. Fungal Fighter has basically, in fact, got even past where Frugal Fighter was. I actually went above and beyond for this. We've actually got two builds and full Exotic Celestial, which was honestly further than what I actually had kind of at the beginning of the Zero to Hero Challenge. So we've exceeded it. We've got over the bar. We hit the leveling. We hit the grind. We hit the blast. And we're in deep. We love the Seer. I consider that a successful experiment and some interesting things learned, right? Get your bladed armor, buy a Berserker set or something like that first. It's nice and cheap and effective. Then work on whatever you want next. Good luck. Have fun. That's it. We are now ready to unlock everything in the game, but in past tense because I already did it on the other account. So you can just kind of pretend that these accounts join together. Successful adventure. Not too bad.